Okay, so renin. Renin is a very interesting protein. So it's an enzyme. This is definitely why I want you to know. It's an enzyme that converts a protein called angiotensinogen into angiotensin 1. So this is Roman numeral 1 here. Now, not a typical hormone. So I think some different textbooks, they say uh, renin is a hormone. But again, hormone implies that it binds to a receptor and causes some sort of cellular change in, to, in the cell that has that receptor. And there is a paper I did. I, I, how old is that? I mean, it's not. It's relatively recent, and it's only from one lab. So I haven't seen an update about this receptor and whether it actually causes signaling and changes inside of the cells that have this supposed renin receptor. But I, this is the part you should focus on. It converts from angiotensin sinogen to angiotensin one. So think of it as more of an enzyme than a hormone that actually causes a change in a cell. Now, that's angiotensin 1. What is the an difference between angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2? Well, the thing is that angiotensinogen, so think of it like it's the genesis, it's the beginning, it's the start. This is the starting peptide. So if I had to draw it to scale, this is angiotensinogen. I'm drawing this little dashed line because it's a very, very, very long polypeptide. So this dash implies that this is a big protein. But renin, it's very interesting because what it does is it's an enzyme, and it's an enzyme that's going to cut this protein. It's going to cleave this polypeptide, and the brought byproduct is called angiotensin 1. So this is angiotensin 1. We went from angiotensinogen, which was a very long protein. Renin cleaved this protein, and now we have a shorter polypeptide called angiotensin 1. We're not at angiotensin 2 yet there's another step that has to occur. Now a different enzyme, so angiotensin converting enzyme, often abbreviated ACE, converts angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2. So they all came from the same original protein, but now it's a further step in processing. So what ACE is going to do is cleave angiotensin 1 up all the way up here, and make it into angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2 of the three polypeptides, so angiotensinogen was the longest part, cleave but was the longest polypeptide, the original polypeptide. That's cleaved by renin into angiotensin 1. Angiotensin 2, I mean angiotensin 1 is cleaved by ACE into angiotensin 2. So angiotensin 2, this is the one that has active cardiovascular effects in terms of increasing blood pressure. So yeah, this is the one, the angiotensin 2 up here, the shortest peptide, that is the active one. Now what we have here, so what does angiotensin 2 do? Well, this is the original Wikimedia Commons picture, but it does all of these five, like it has a multi-pronged attack. It does many different things. One, we, it increases ADH secretion, or actually let's rewind it a bit. It increases sympathetic activity, right? So what does sympathetic activity do? Well, remember, in general, it's going to increase your blood flow. It's going to increase your blood pressure. Remember, sympathetic is that famous flight or flight thing. And then it's also going to increase your cardiac output. Remember those sympathetic fibers in the heart rate? It's going to increase your heart rate. It's going to increase your stroke volume. It's going to increase your cardiac output. By increasing your cardiac output, it also increases your pressure. So what does it do? Increases your blood pressure. Water retention. So by telling your kidneys to reabsorb more water, that causes the, you to build up the fluids in your body. By having more water in your body, that means more fluids in your blood vessels. So more blood volume, increased blood pressure. How about sodium absorption? Well, just like go back to aldosterone, right? So increased blood osmolarity means increased BCOP, increased reabsorption of water, thereby increasing your blood pressure. Aldosterone secretion, again, increasing both water and so sodium reabsorption, increasing osmolarity, increasing your blood pressure, and increasing your ADH production. Again, if you're going to retain water, that's going to increase your blood pressure. So angiotensin 2 is a very powerful increaser of blood pressure. Why? It's going to cause all of this, and notice that there's a lot of overlap. So this is why angiotensin 2 is very powerful. 
And somebody already mentioned in chat, some yeah, you have like they saw where I'm leading to. So ACE inhibitors, like capital pril is an example, and actually a lot of these ACE inhibitors, if it ends with this pril, it's probably an ACE inhibitor, unless it's a weird exception. Okay, so then what they do is inhibit angiotensin converting enzyme. And remember, angiotensin 2 is that active one that increases your blood pressure through that multi-pronged attack, right? So what happens if you inhibit ACE? If you can't convert angiotensin 1 to angiotensin 2, then you don't have the effects of angiotensin 2. So by blocking ACE, you block production of angiotensin 2, thereby blocking that all those that laundry list of effects that angiotensin 2 has, thereby lowering your blood pressure. So again, angiotensin 2, very important hormone in regulating your blood pressure. And actually, to make it a little topic, topical, you probably heard of ACE2. And you'll be like, oh, ACE2, isn't that the one that spike protein from the, the new uh, SARS-CoV-2 binds to? And the thing is that angiotensin converting enzyme is related, but it's not the same as ACE2. So don't get, convergent, don't get confused that ACE is the same thing as that famous COVID ACE2. And why? Well, this is what we just covered. Again, angiotensinogen is cleaved by renin into angiotensin 1. ACE converts angiotensin 1 into angiotensin 2. That increases blood pressure. ACE2 is actually a side process from that. So what it actually does is further processes angiotensin 1 and angiotensin 2 in these shorter peptides called yeah angiotensin 1. They started running out of names, so they just started adding numbers. No, I'm just kidding. They're, they're pro there's probably like a name for it already by now. But yeah, don't get them confused. ACE is not the same thing as ACE2. Do I expect you to know this at this stage? No, it's kind of FYI. But it's actually very interesting because if you've been following things like what happens to, why do they say like the COVID is kind of like a cardiovascular disease? Well, thing is that it does involve that ACE2 enzyme and, and protein. So what we have with angiotensin 2 is that we have vasoconstriction, right? So vasoconstriction is going to increase your blood pressure. The interesting thing about ACE2 is that these peptides right here, this like angiotensin 1, 9, and 1, 7, what they do is actually almost the opposite. So instead of actually increasing the pressure, they actually cause vasodilation and cause a decrease in blood pressure by causing the vessels to dilate and grow bigger. So this is kind of like ACE2 is almost like the overall effect is almost opposite that of ACE. So if you're kind of messing, this is why they think there's a lot of, why there's a lot of correlation between disorders of the vascular system and COVID because what's it doing? Well, it's messing with this whole system right here. But we're, what exactly it's doing, there's still, this, this is what scientists are doing right now.